Hey, what is up guys? My name is Oliver and welcome back to Predatory Exotics. So before we jump into this video, I just want to explain why I am alone today in this video. Uh, the UK is in its like 100th lockdown again. Um, and we pre-recorded a load of stuff for you guys, uh, but those pre-recorded videos have now run out. And so me and Tom can't meet up and actually make videos. So for the foreseeable future, until this lockdown is lifted, we've decided that each week you'll be getting a different video from either me or Tom uh, individually. So it's, it's not the best situation, but it is what we're gonna have to do for now. But with all that explained, let's get into today's video. So let's start this care guide off with a bit of background information about your ghost mantis. The ghost mantis comes from places like Madagascar and some are found in Africa. Their coloration actually varies from very dark browns almost to a black, from a very light brown almost to a red, and then even sandy colors and greens, which makes them a great variety of which kind of one you'd be after. These guys will only live to about a year, a year and a half, which some people, I feel like that's why it puts them off. You know, you have a very small window of breeding, but in that year and a half, it, they make such a cool pet. You know, it's awesome to watch them feed. Um, it's, you know, just cool to watch them in their day-to-day -day life, especially some of the ones that are hard to find and they blend in really well. These guys will grow to about 40 millimeters to 50 millimeters, so these guys aren't gonna get too big. Now, with a bit of background information out of the way, let's get on with where you would actually purchase your mantis. Now, these guys can be found in a lot of different reptile stores, especially around the area on here, but can also be purchased online. Now, we do recommend uh, purchasing online, although we have not done it ourselves, it's definitely something we're gonna be looking into doing in the future. These guys are gonna range from about 15 to 25 pound, at least that's what we've seen from personal experience. Um, everything in this video is kind of gonna be how we keep them. Um, I don't think it varies too much. It varies slightly on different online guides that you'll find, but this is how we've been keeping ours and it's doing really well. So now that you've purchased your ghost mantis, you're gonna to need to house it in something. We house it in actually what is a fruit fly cup that we've found on an online website for only a pound. Um, I think we bought like five for five pounds, so it was really easy, and it makes convenient space for your ghost mantis. The general rule of thumb is that you need it to be about three times the height of the mantis and about two times wide, giving them plenty of space for their living environment. So the kind of stuff you wanna put inside this actual enclosure is we've put a mixture of soil and moss on the bottom to keep in that humidity, along with a couple of fake plants and some sticks for climbing. There's not really much else to go into it, that's just kind of what you need. As long as they have climbing space, can get to the roof quite easily. Um, it's kind of your choice on what you want to put in there. Um, we also have some dead leaves crumbled in there. Um, it's not a bioactive setup because it is, you know, it's fake plants and... Um, you're going to want to try and get something that doesn't have too large of ventilation holes due to what these guys actually eat, which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's talk about the actual daily upkeep of this mantis. These guys like it at about 20 to 30 degrees, you know, idling at around 26, but room temperature will be perfectly fine for them as long as you don't let it drop below 18. These guys will spend most of their time actually just hanging upside down. They're more kind of a sit and wait animal for the prey, which actually makes misting their enclosure really easy. So speaking of misting, you're gonna to wanna to mist these guys about five times a week. They like it quite humid, um, it, it helps with their molts, you know, you can't really go wrong, but you do not want to be spraying these guys directly with their small size, one spray from, <clears throat> one spray from a water gun like this will take them out pretty quickly. So be careful where you're spraying, but thankfully they spend most of the time on the lid. So when you take it off to spray in the enclosure, you won't have a chance of hitting it, but just be careful. A fun fact about this mantis that a lot of mantis aren't like, um, is that these guys actually can be communal. Now, um, you can actually keep ghost mantis due to their docile tendencies. They won't actually attack each other as long as you've got the food supply going. Once that food supply runs out, they will turn on each other and then you've got a cannibalistic uh, mantis in your hands and that wouldn't be good for anything. But yeah, you are able to keep these guys together. Of course, if you've got more, you're gonna wanna have a bigger tank, a bigger setup. Um, and just make so we've talked about food so much let's actually talk about what you're going to be feeding these guys now these guys um, ideally would live off of fruit flies you can buy fruit flies online on Amazon or your local reptile shops that would ship to you 
um, they don't live too long. So you gotta try and keep them alive as long as possible um, by feeding them and you know, they, they won't live long in general. So I wouldn't buy too many at once unless you've got a large selection of mantis that you're feeding. These guys will also live on crickets as well. There's a few things online that's saying you shouldn't really feed the crickets to them because uh, they're not that powerful. But if you feed them small enough crickets, then they should be fine. We fed our ghost mantis off of crickets and they are doing just fine right now. Um, we also do keep a mixture of fruit flies and crickets. It's all depending on what we have access to on the day, uh, especially if stuff is being shipped out. You know, you, you still want to feed your mantis. So let's talk about when we feed our mantis. We feed our mantis twice a week. We feed it on Tuesday and Thursdays. Now, this is not necessarily that it, it will eat on both of those days. Some days we'll, eat, we'll feed it on Tuesday. It will eat a nice large meal and then reject the meal on a Thursday. In terms of uh, feeding, hand feeding the uh, ghost mantis, our ghost mantis doesn't actually really like to be hand fed. It actually likes to chase down its prey. Um, I know that we're kind of contradicting the sit and wait, but we actually do have a video of it chasing its prey, which is pretty cool to watch, and I'll throw it up on the screen now. This clip that you're actually watching is us kind of hand feeding it. We've taken it out of the tank and put it onto its lid so it can chase and find it. Um, but in general, we drop a cricket in the tub and leave it for the day, and by the end of the day, that cricket is no longer there. Um, one of the coolest things to watch the mantis eat as you can get quite close up and as you can see it devours its prey and they eat pretty quickly. Once your ghost mantis has eaten you'll notice that its actual abdomen on its back is a lot larger that's where they've stored all their food and this is actually where we're going to move on to how you know if your mantis is healthy. If your mantis has got a over expanding abdomen and it's kind of you know it's stretching that exoskeleton then you're probably overfeeding it you've got too much food going in there um, they will overeat sometimes, so you just want to keep an eye on that. If it is super flat, like a thin leaf, then you are definitely underfeeding your mantis and you want to maybe increase the food that you're giving it or increase how often you're giving it. And then a typical behavior pattern of the mantis is that if it's towards the ground, um, hanging uh, not like this guy is right now on the ceiling, then he is hunting for food and he's hungry. So we're gonna move on to the actual uh, how your mantis grow. <clears throat> so we're gonna move on to how your mantis grows up. These guys will actually molt their exoskeleton similar to a spider or a scorpion. And um, that's why they need the height. They need the height so they can hang onto the ceiling, drop down out of their exoskeleton, give them plenty of room to get out and not get stuck and have a bad molt. Once your mantis has molted, we do recommend that you do not feed it for about five days. They're their exoskeleton is really squishy at this point, super soft, especially if you're feeding it some kind of cricket. The cricket can then start eating your mantis because it hasn't hardened its exoskeleton. So once it's molt, we'd say leave it about five days. This is what a mantis molt actually looks like. A lot smaller than what he looks like now, and you'll see a dramatic change once they have molted. You'll suddenly look in your tank and be like, whoa, this guy is like twice as big. Um, which I feel like one of the cooler features of keeping these. Like we said, they only live to a year and a, a year and a half and they go through different stages of molting. Now I'm gonna throw a picture up on screen of what they are called. They are called L and then a number. This depending on what size your mantis is at and you know, it shows you how drastically they will change. You think this will happen, it will go from an L1 to an L8 in about a year, which is pretty crazy and you get to watch that grow. Um, so it's definitely one of the more uh, noticeable growing animals that you can keep in your collection. So let's talk about the handleability of the ghost mantis. This is a wonderful docile animal that will happily sit on your hand as long as you're gentle with it. You've got to make sure that you are gentle because they can feel threatened and start to attack you. Although this won't hurt, it will stress out your mantis itself. So yeah, as you can see, these guys are wonderful for handling. Um, I feel like, you know, as long as you have adult supervision, these things are a great one for kids. Um, yeah, as you can tell, he's looking at me. Hello, yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so the handleability is definitely a yes, although we said like he doesn't really enjoy hand feeding. Um, and it, when you hold them, they'll just tend to sit there and just kind of watch you. Sometimes you'll notice they will do a swaying of their body to symbolize a sort of leaf. And as you can tell, they have really good grip. <laughs> this guy is hanging on with no issue. Um, so yeah, so handability is a yes. So this girl doesn't want to get off my hand right now, so we're just going to move on to the next section, which is sexing and breeding your ghost mantis. 
Personally, the easiest way to sex your ghost mantis is by the antenna. The males tend to have wider and longer antenna, whereas the females are shorter and thinner. This is by our own belief that this one is actually a female, which is wonderful. So in terms of breeding, uh, you want to make sure that it is about two to four weeks after the last molt in the cycle, that in the picture that we showed up before. And you want to just put them in together and make sure that the female is nice and fed beforehand. It's very rare that they will cannibalize on each other during mating with this species, but you don't want to take any chances, especially if you've only got one shot. So when you put them in there, this can take several hours. There's nothing really you can do. It's all up to them and they'll do it themselves. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully in a few days time, you will have the eggs being laid and you can, they can lay anyway upwards of 300 eggs, which is pretty crazy because um, it means that you'll have loads of baby little ghost mantises running around. Um, but then, you know, because you, they're communal, you can keep them together and uh, whatever you choose to do with them, we'll be looking into breeding this ghost mantis and hopefully selling off some of the baby nymphs. So the breeding isn't actually too complicated. We haven't personally done it, so we can't really talk about personal experience, but we will in the future attempt to do it and of course keep you guys updated with how it goes. So I hope you have enjoyed and I hope I haven't missed anything in this video. It is really a different experience doing it on your own, um, not having someone next to you also helping you out. Um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. So don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below if I did miss anything out. I hope I haven't. Uh, but also comment down below if you keep Ghost Mantis yourself and what colour do you keep? Of course, as you can see, ours is a light to darkish brown. Um, and he, she is really a cool, a cool species. I love keeping Mantids and I can't wait to keep more in the future. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check us out on our other social medias as well, especially Instagram, probably the one we post the most on. You can have daily updates, daily pictures of these guys that we keep in around our houses. So without further ado, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.